Hello everyone and good evening. Welcome to the LSE Transfer Room. I see the chat is already kicking off in the in the chat. It's nice to see John John Thomas uh, getting his point in already before we even started. But welcome guys. Thursday night. It's nice to not have a game on the Thursday night and nice to chat at seven thirty instead of half ten. Um international break, it's that time of the year again, Nathan. We see it every time. Um LPL surviving at the moment, surviving. We've still got another week yet of, of, of pain and torture of watching internationals. First of all, Stu, Reese, Nathan, how are you boys doing Thursday night? Good, man. Good. Good. I'm good, I'm good, can't complain, can't complain. How are you? Uh, a bit bored, mate, a bit bored. Yeah, <laughs> yeah as much as I don't... As much as it's nice to have an R seven, but I, still, I miss my football. I miss my yeah. football. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, you're yeah. watching other things that that need to be watched. Um, internationals, I, I can't get internationals no matter what, unless it's maybe the like World Cup or the Euros. I can get into it a little yeah. bit. But, I don't mind yeah. it when like the last couple of games England have had go um, Trent playing midfield. I don't mind watching it then. I feel like that. The only reason like, why this is why this is why I can't be a Liverpool uh, an England fan as much because back in the yeah. day when Gerard was there, I was more of a Gerard fan. I'd like yeah. to watch Gerard and like you always be like Gerard Lampard scores and against each other. Yeah, I'd always be like to see that. It'd be nice to have Trent call up again and see how he does. But for each getting a call up that. as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's it about, nice it's about it. time with Gomez though for me. It's about yeah. Yeah. yeah, he didn't Long deserve it last year though. Last year he was terrible, was he? I think every nearly every Liverpool fan was sitting there thinking maybe it but, could be time to sell now. But he stuck with him and this season he's been. If you'd have to pick a player for most improved, which is ironic, because go back four yeah. years ago, he was fantastic. He's yeah. got to be up there, do you know what I mean? For me, though, the whole Liverpool squad was terrible last year. Don't get me wrong, Gomez wasn't great. I think but he was at I... the top, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for me, yeah. everyone wasn't... Everyone, was, was, yeah. everyone was terrible, so for me, yeah, there's, no, like, there's no... I, I 100% agree, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's no... For me, there can't be a standout if everyone's been terrible. If it's just one person and everyone's been playing good, then it's... it's what different. was the game that we played where... Was it... Uh, Brent, was uh, it? Brian, Brian. Wasn't no yeah, one in the Champions League away or home? Was it Napoli? Yeah, or was it Napoli? In... We got absolutely... uh, there was Napoli as yeah, well. Yeah, that we game, Joe yeah, Gomez was like, that's the worst performance I've seen from a Liverpool centre back for like. Was it Real Madrid as well? Though? Was, was it Madrid? I'm I don't remember if he's done anything against Madrid. Or... I'm for glad he's kept him anyway, and he's got the, he's rightly got his yeah. England call up because yeah. on his he day did... he's, he should be starting for England. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That left back though, it's mad that he's come at left back because I I thought this season. In the summer, if you asked me in the summer, would you have sold Gomez? I'd have been like, why not? Because yeah. as a right back and a centre back, it will finish at that point. Yeah. But then he's coming to left back. He's sort of, he's not, I don't know, he's a, he's a different player at left back for some reason. And when I like, him, right I like, week, I like him playing him. at left back as well, though. It's strange. Like, it's like, I, I would genuinely say now there's a, a massive split in a fan base who would start at left back. Like, if you had to pick between Gomez and Robertson. And that's for like me, it's Gomez. Not it's it's a hard, it's, for me. It's a hard, it's a hard question to answer. I think mm. in the system that Liverpool play now, if Trent's playing, I think Gomez should start. If Trent's yeah. not playing, it's Conor Bradley. I think yeah. I, I I think Liverpool needs to go into games sometimes because we see the inverted fullback and Joe Gomez has done it at times. I don't think he's great at that. I think as an actual yeah, yeah. fullback, and he's really actually really good. I so if Trent's the there and he's in like yeah. kind of like of a back three, yeah. But if he's not. I'd rather Liverpool go to like the way we used to play four three three and play Robertson and Conor Bradley and get them staying wide. Do you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. Gomez has been fantastic. Like, so I agree. Great, so I, good. I do not like that inverted fullback, inverted yes. wing back system. It just leaves too many gaps for me. I don't um, mind it when Trent's playing it, but it has to be Trent. No one else can do it. If, if Trent's not there, yeah. you can't play it. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather Gomez and even Bradley. I'd rather them when they play the traditional fullback. Yeah. And see, I think when we beat Chelsea four one. Um, at home, I think Conor Bradley played traditional fullback. It looked much more yeah. balanced. So yeah. unless it's Trent doing their bird, I don't really, I don't really find it comfortable. It's quite hard to watch. I think Conor Bradley's defend, got like defending. he's got similar traits to like got uh, Trent and Robertson because mm. I think Robertson and Trent are completely different footballers. He's a lot like, quicker though. Yeah, that's what, it, yeah what, that's what I mean. Like Conor Bradley's like a bit of a mix of both of them. Yeah. Like he's great on the ball. He's got a fantastic pass, but he's also like for me, he could probably go and play midfield, but he. He seems to me more like he's better off staying wide on the right, like crossing yeah. the balls. And I, I think he's such a good young player. We will start tonight off in terms of transfers, in terms of, of the news today, boys. Um, we'll start off with the Rodrigo situation. Um, 
John says, hey, hi, guys. I think, I think Rodrigo would be a good signing for us. Plenty of potential with good age profile. Again, yes, we spoke about it just before we came on stream that this guy is a, is a, is a decent age. He's got a decent potential. We seem to, Liverpool seem to spend on players like this at this sort of, at this age and this potential. Um, there is talks of him being f- worried about his future at Real Madrid because when M- Mbappe come in the door and Enrique come in the door, you've got Vinic- uh, Vinicius Junior. Uh, Belgium was playing more forward position at the moment as well. Um, is he going to get in that team? Reese, mm. is Rodrigo a player for you? Um, I, I rate him as, I rate him as a player. I rate him. And he's got a brother as well. I can't remember his brother. I'm sure he's got a brother who plays for someone as well. But um, no, I rate him as a player. I think he's a good young player. There's still a lot more to come from him. And he can play a few positions. Um, for me, the only thing the only thing I'm worried about is that I think Real Madrid are going to demand too much for him. I don't think we're going to pay it over. I would pay like 70 or 80 million, but anything 100 million above, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay. Do you think that they'd be quite happy to maybe... Maybe not take less, but be happy to take a reasonable fee though if they need to fund this Mbappe signing. Because I know obviously they've they've got the Real Madrid in terms of like how much money they've have got to be able to spend. It's Real Madrid, they're the biggest for me, the biggest club in the world. Mm. Um, so I think if you're getting the opportunity to take, I don't know how much he's on a week. Let's say he's on a hundred grand, hundred and fifty grand to take that off your books and also get eighty million for a player that they probably played. What did they pay? Maybe twenty, thirty million or something for him mm. from Brazil. Mm-hmm. He's only just turned 23, which is massive as well. Like he's still got his whole career ahead of him. He's been playing for Madrid for, for like four or five years. But I think if you give them the opportunity to get that money, and you know it's going to soften the blow of how much they're going to have to spend on Mbappe because Mbappe is going to demand like a hundred million, hundred and fifty million pounds like signing on fee. Like he's and he's going to be on like you know anything from five hundred to like a million pound a week. Do you think we um, could use that to our advantage, Nathan? Because... I think so. Yeah, I can't see why not. Like, um, you think you know you need the money? Let's yeah. handle that. You can handle like, it. Real Madrid have got money. And it, like, I was having this conversation a couple of months ago with one of my mates, and it's interesting to see like they get all these superstars, but in terms of how much they've spent, in terms of like net spend, as we Liverpool fans, we'd love to go on about it. It's actually not that high because they have periods where they'll go and spend like loads of money over like mm. eighteen months, two years, and then you won't you won't really see them bring many players in. Like we mm. seen last summer, and I think this is obviously building up to try and get Mbappe. He needed a striker, Benzema left, and he went and got Yosselu on loan, I think it is. So yeah, yeah, they're yeah. willing to spend for the right players, but they also it's not it's not as simple as like what it used to be in like the early two thousands where it was Scattergun where they'd go and buy, you know, every single year he'd have to buy a Galactico, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas now I mean, Mbappe is that player. Like it's debatable who's the best player in the world or the best young player in the world as of like him, Haaland and players like that. But in terms of what like the stature of player, he is the perfect player for Real Madrid, you know what I mean? And I just think with the amount of money that he will cost, I just think it could open up for someone like Rodrigo to, to be let go. And as we said before, he's flexible. He can play a couple of different positions. And we've seen under, obviously we're not going to be under Klopp, but we've seen under this era of Klopp, uh, we like to buy players that can play multiple positions. So obviously Jota, left wing striker. We've seen Diaz play on the right as well. Uh, Nunes, left wing striker. Gakpo, left back, right back in goal everywhere at the minute. So going to buy a young player that's still got higher ceiling to go towards for for let's say it is 80 million that like in today's game it's a lot of money but it's not is it like it's not a ridiculous amount of money especially for someone that's like he's won league titles he's won champions leagues he's been a part of it i i i think we it could definitely only if salah leaves for big money in the summer i think we go for him though but i think i've always said i've always said i don't even look at the money anymore in terms of transfers is it's the back up on a pitch i don't think it matters because like you know going back to van dyke and then allison i said all the time they were 80 to 70, 70 million each. So, and people were like, you know, why are you spending that much money on that? It's not worth that. Not worth... But look at the done since. Look what they've done since. I this is what I think about Rodrigo as well. I think Liverpool either go and buy someone like him, someone very young, versatile, great player, mm-hmm. a lot of experience, and ready to go to that next step in terms of like, not club, probably the massive, but the next level in his career. Or they go and buy a back of Yoko for 30 million or something or 20 million. It's not, it, there's not an in between. I don't think. I think it's that or that. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree in terms of the where we bought Van Dyke and Allison, but you got to remember we only got them two because we sold Coutinho. That's what. Yeah, and 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 you got think, <laughs> and, and you got to think how FSG think in it. A lot of the time they always kind of think they're trying to get value for money. Obviously, he's a young player. Like I said, I'll pay seventy or eighty million. I just don't see them. I don't see them paying over a hundred million. This is why I said before. 
Yeah. Salah goes for this to happen. And that's yeah, it. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and only yeah. if Salah goes, as I don't see us buying him. Which I hope he doesn't. Yeah. Salah, I, like, I think Rodrigo is fantastic, but Salah's a freak of nature. Mm-hmm. Like, genuinely, this injury that he had recently is like the first injury I've seen him have for Liverpool, like I can remember. Kind of Apart injured, from yeah. having yeah. like COVID like mm-hmm. two years ago or something, which he's genuinely in the physical capacity to be able to play on. I think at this level, he might slow down a little bit, but you can see already this season changes his game slightly. Yeah. He could do this Still, in another three or four years. Still, it is the arrows part that are that are um, reporting this, so it's not entirely reliable. But can you can you see can you see Liverpool paying for the Mbappe deal to happen? If that makes sense, because we are basically giving them money to get the Mbappe deal. Can I see us paying it? In all honesty, no. Um, I think what well, the biggest deal at the club at the moment is it Nunes. The, is that totaled over about 80 Maybe, million? Maybe as a whole, possibly, well, yeah. Yeah, as a yeah. whole. Yeah. It, again, obviously, FSG are very astute when it comes to financial matters yeah. and stuff like that, so they structure their deals how it suits them. Um, obviously, we're going to be back in the Champions League next season. There's no doubt yeah. about that. 100%. So a lot of it will get offset with that money coming in. Can I see a player like Rodrigo joining us? Yeah, I can. Um, as Reese, Nathan and yourself have all said, an adaptable player could play up front both wings. He's been at Madrid now for I was just having a look there while you guys were talking. He's been at Madrid for four years now. Yeah, we've in 2019 okay. for 45 million euros approximately. And he's played over only over 130 games in those four years. Now, obviously, yeah, he's young, he's only 23 years old, so he's not going to break into the first team as such. But as you say, if Mbappe's coming in, he's gonna take that slot straight away that Real Madrid are not going to mess around and mm-hmm. say, right, Mbappe, you're sitting on the bench. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Spent ton loads of money on your wages. Not going to happen. So I can understand from his perspective, yeah, he's going to want and say, actually, I'm in a position now. I'm 23 going on 24. I need to be playing a team starter. Yeah. I need yeah. to be a regular. Where can I go and do that? Possibly Liverpool, where maybe we ship out one maybe two of our forwards this summer. Who knows? Um, it all depends on what Edwards and that have got planned in the background, <laughs> which is going to be and very, we very still haven't got a manager either, so it's, it's, it's exactly. hard yeah, to even speak that. about what Managers formation are... we're going to play in. Exactly. If Alonso, plays, thing, yeah, if Alonso plays his 3-5-2 formation or 3-5-1-2 formation, he's it, not, it's not going to be you know playing a wing. He's going to play yeah. a full-back uh, pushing on, so... It's it's it really is impossible to even talk about transfers and stuff at the moment. Oh, we have the transfer room, but it, as a as a whole, because the lack of the the lack of um, clarity on where we're going forward, yeah, it's hard to really put these into place. Because you know, is Rodrigo going to work under Amari? Um, is is Rodrigo going to work under Alonso? We don't know yeah, because we yeah. don't know which one we're going to get. What do you Amari? think? Like at this moment in time, right now, what do you actually think? Like the recruit, so. We obviously know come June the first, or is it June the first or July the first? Klopp's not in anymore. So, what, like the, the recruitment team are obviously not just sitting there twiddling the thumbs. They've got to be doing something. Are they sitting there now? Obviously, we all know that Liverpool are heavily run on data when it comes to buying players. Yeah. Do you think they're drawing up lists now, potential yeah. players? I think they are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you will be doing that, but I mean, based on different managers. Do you think they've Possibly, been given yeah. the task? Like of a few going? lists. Yeah. 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 So, like, imagine. obviously, uh, Amarim. Or however you pronounce his name, and Alonso both play free at the back football. The Zerbi doesn't. So let's say they're Liverpool's free choice of managers, which we're seeing is ra- widely reported nearly every day. So do you think do, do, do you think there's a possibility that they've got you've been given two tasks or three tasks to go and find players that suit X, Y, and Z type of football in in, in comparison the, to what we would normally the, do? The way I see it is in this big conference room. At the training ground, the scouts have got three whiteboards with <laughs> Derby, Amarim, and Alonso, and they got lists for goalkeeper, defenders, yeah. midfielders, and attackers, the formations that they prefer to play. And now they're picking out all the players, obviously data driven with it as yeah. well, on who fits those positions best out of our squad that we've got already mm-hmm. and where we could improve those specific positions in case we get one of those managers coming in. That's, yeah. the, that's how I envisage it. That's anyway. what I was thinking. Like, surely that's got to be the most logical thing to do. 
Yeah, this has got to be, that has got to be an account though. When he's looking at our squad right now, when you when you're picking a manager, he's looking at our squad right now and does the players pick a manager? I, I don't. That has got to come into fruition. Um, I don't. I don't want Deserbi though. I'm, I'm praying that we don't get Deserbi. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want I don't mind Deserbi. I think a lot Reece, of people. Reece think Reece wants Reece Reece wants Reece I don't mind Deserbi. No, Alonso, Alonso or Ruben is, is fine with me. But Deserbi, he reminds me a lot of um, Pep Pep Guardiola. I don't, I don't. I don't want. In terms of his mannerisms, he's very like. Throws his toys out the pram and stuff. I don't, like, I don't mind him at all. You know, quite, I'm, I'm quite actually, dramatic. You know what this weird one I seen in the pool group the other day, and mm. it had never happened. And I think I might have said this last time, but I'd love Mourinho to manage Liverpool, not as football, but him. I don't know why there's just something about him. There's a sweet spot about Mourinho that I just think He's like he wants the job in 2004. Yeah. I just, I just soft spot like he knows, like he hated it being at United. He didn't like it. He didn't like being at Chelsea. He knew they were all plastic, like plastic fans. You know what I mean? I think at oh, Liverpool, yeah. he'd love it. I but rate just... Mourinho. The only thing with him is um is the football. We're yeah, not that's what I mean. Have... Like, it's football. Yeah, we're not going to be happy with that kind of football. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we kind of want to win in style. We don't want to win just winning. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and and it depends. I still think he's a good manager, but I'm not. Sh- I'm wondering if, uh, in terms of Premier League, he's kind of got to adapt his his way of playing in it. Yeah. When he when when he was when he was at Chelsea, that way kind of was. Yeah. That was that. It, you know the ironic saw, thing is now, yeah. Mourinho will probably be fantastic for someone like Forrest who was struggling and tried to stay up. Yeah. Who have got good players. It sounds mad saying that because Mourinho yeah. is, you know, in our lifetime, he's probably top five managers, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or up there at least. Like, yeah. And it's crazy to say that, but like, his robust defensive style of football is one of the reasons why people rate the likes of John Teddy and Petr Cech so highly because, you know, not to take, not to take anything away from them, both fantastic players, but he had a system put in place that was basically... You know, you're not going to score, and then we will score. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whereas Jurgen Klopp is back in the early days anyway. If you score four, we'll score six. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, I just yeah, think yeah. for someone like Forrest, who have got like a fantastic group of players, like I was looking at their team a couple of days ago, like there's genuinely probably three or four players I'd take, like the young lad Danilo, Mario, Gibbs White. People shoot me first. I even think Alanga's all right. Alanga's looked really good under them this season. You've got a couple, like, they've got some good players, and I think. If he was to like, let's say, like he was to go to them, I think he'd actually set them up perfectly to keep them up. I think he still needs the players, though. I don't think he could do like something that we see Steve Bruce or like Sean Dice doing coming and do it with, like yeah. you know, yeah. not as good players. But I think he could the do a job like a lower team. With his ego, I just don't see him ever taking like a, a job. Like That's why I love him. I just love him. Yeah, I love I mean, the fact that not, he celebrated that. I'm feel like it's weird because like I don't know if you've seen it was heavily like. Um, publicised the time he got it he gave his agent the job to get him the Liverpool job before he got the Chelsea job he wanted to be the Liverpool manager yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember, why he's always yeah. had that little rivalry with Liverpool and um, Benitez because he was he was gutted that Benitez got the job and you know at the time you could argue maybe Mourinho was I don't know if he was more qualified for it but because obviously Benitez has won like the Europa League and he's won like the La Liga and stuff but he just won the Champions League yeah, and with Porto as well a fantastic team, job Porto, that yeah. Porto team was a great, and just great sort of about Mourinho as football not so much but just him as a person like if he was going to come in and like you know control the club as, as a such and then bring in some very high coaches that were not so he was not dealing with the football on the pitch I'd, I could do that I just I don't know just sort of about him the league that he's got with Gerrard and things like you could just see like he seems to yeah. be like a proper football fan as well that would Love being at Anfield. Yeah, I think he would fall in love with Liverpool quite quickly. I mean, you've seen that bit, that clip of him and him and Wenger just listening exactly to the crowd and you know, yeah. Um Hashen says here, David, since you're a big fan of FSG, what do you think of the return of Edwards with Big Everall and Hughes as our sporting director? Is it all good so far? As I've always said with uh, FSG, I will always praise them for the good things they do. This is, this is why I don't have an agenda on FSG. If I had an agenda. There will be no good things at present. So far, they've done it so so good so far with FSG, and also the manager's the same. Um, I'm still a bit up in the air of why Klopp's leaving, and you know, there's still niggles in me that I think there's more to the story. If that makes sense, yeah, there's, there's more to the story. Well, there's always there's always more to the story. 100%. It seems out of the blue that he just come out and wants to leave, isn't it? So we all like, I'd like to believe it. It's just because he is too tired. <laughs> but it just it seems the connection that he's got with the club, even now when you see him celebrating at the end of the match, like it's just yeah, I don't know. And we're gonna and, uh, we're gonna go on to uh, the the Nunes and the Soberside story that came out earlier on. Again, not a reliable source, but still a story that has come out uh, yeah. with someone that does work out to watch as well. So, and that is being unhappy with how the board has dealt with the young club situation. I still think there's there is more to that 
and that's just my I don't want to say conspiracy, but that's what I'm I'm putting jigsaws together and getting that um about FSG at the moment. And I think it's all because the the reports were that Jurgen Klopp decided this in a meeting with FSG that he'd had enough. To me, yeah. that that's that that speaks volumes. Uh, I think you'll find the majority of the players on the list will be the same. Hi guys, how many players do you think we would need? I I would like a centre back, a left back, a defensive midfielder, another right winger, and maybe a backup goalie. I think yeah. you know what I think that's about it. I think that's about right. I, I think that is about I'll right. Well, yeah. I'd say definitely a left back, and possibly a left back I could play a centre back. But again, it all depends on the manager as well, because we definitely need a left back if we get Alonso, because you know Robertson's running out of legs. Simic isn't good enough anymore, and I don't but know. He, if he does centre backs as well. He plays three at the back. Exactly. We can't, we can't rely on Canate yeah. and Matip. going to be gone in the summer anyway. Me, me personally, I, I still think Simakas is good enough. As a squad player, I think he's good enough. Yeah, yes. I think he is. But he's I still never, think we he's need a never... defensive midfielder. I think we need a young defensive midfielder. Yeah, I was going to say that I, as well. We've I had wonder, disagreements I in the WhatsApp six. chat, or I still think Pachetis is that player. Everyone thinks obviously never... everyone, most people have been disagreeing with me and said he's an eighth. I genuinely think That's he what he I've been hearing, though, at eight. I've been hearing he's better in eight. He's exactly what Rodri is for City for us. He's got everything mm-hmm. like that. Like Rod, like people, everyone's got this big assumption now that everyone that um, every number six has to play like Polinia. It doesn't work mm-hmm. like that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, I get what people like. Have you seen how far forward Rodri plays? Like, mm-hmm. why do you think he gets so many goals? Why do you think? I know Declan Rice has gone slightly into more of an eight role for Arsenal now. But why do you think he's got so many goals this season? Like, you've got to be able to play football. Like, I was watching the overlap this morning, and he was saying like, you don't know why. Teams don't put someone constantly on Rodri in the game because he controls the game. Yeah, like literally yeah. controls the whole game. And I just think Pachetic on the ball. I get like why people think an eight, as an eighty might be better because he can. He's, he's actually quite good on the ball in terms of like going forward and stuff. Yeah, and drive. Yeah, yeah. I just I, I. I would I would say I I can't see a sign of defensive midfielder. I'd be very surprised. Yeah. Not yeah, just I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't. I don't think we're going to get one. Yeah. I if we sign one, I wouldn't be against it. it. But I just think Pachetic has missed a whole year now, or. Let's say eight months or something. No, but it's a year, isn't it? You only play for one game. Oh, let's almost, say you missed a year. Almost a so, year, I'd say no. Yeah, let's yeah. say if is he going to play over the likes of Curtis Jones, Elliot, Sobers, Lyme, McAllister, and players like that? I just don't think he will. I think he could be molded into an eight. He could be molded into eight. Could be molded into a six. I still uh, think though he's a young player, so I don't want to put. I don't want to put just throw. Even though he played for us last, he season. could end up going to centre back. Someone's saying that he's like he's meant to be like six foot two, six foot three. He's played that. Yeah, he's 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 Apparently, he's had a growth. Yeah. Like he's had a growth spurt. Yeah, like, that's why he has bigger, been getting played. A lot bigger, yeah. But I don't want to put all the pressure. I don't want to put all the pressure on um percentage because obviously last year no, he, he should really... be. He should be. You know, when he played the Europa League early on the season, I think it was the only game he played. He played right back. And he mm. didn't play great, he, especially the first like 20, 30 minutes. And then he started like getting into the game. I think we actually done it. Um, I think I was on a live with Damon after the game. Um, and he struggled a little bit, but he hadn't played the game of football for like six months. So it's it's one of them. I think it would have been perfect this season for him to actually be there, ready to play. Because he could have played, you know, League football or League Cup football regularly. Got some minutes into his legs and like, we could have kind of seen a little bit more of what he's all about in terms of like... Because last season, I think he only played like... I think it was like 1,500 minutes, which is nothing yeah. really. And it was in a it was in a season and at a time where Liverpool were terrible. Like Fabinho, his legs looked like they'd gone or they had gone. Henderson was next to him doing what Henderson does. And <laughs> we just didn't look great last season. I feel like we all we all appreciated how good Pachetic was at such a young age in that midfield. Yeah. And I just think... The same with me now, thinking that he could be the next Rodri. The same with everyone else, thinking he could be a, a fantastic number eight. He kind of, like, I think he elevated how good we thought he was because the players around him were so bad as well. It was refreshing, wasn't it? Yeah. But then it's, again, it's our best fantastic. form, our best form was when Bocetti was playing. Yeah, when he was playing. Yeah. 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 It was he, the feel... he started. He started off to, like last. I, I love to use the stat all the time when people talk about Liverpool last season. Liverpool were terrible last season, but if you go from game week twenty onwards, which is the second half of the season, Liverpool had the second most points in the league. Like, yeah. That's when we changed formation. Gakpo that. came in. Gakpo it, it was, came in it was from um, it was just I can't remember the exact game, but it was basically when Gakpo mm. started. Because you remember going towards the end of last season, people were saying Gakpo should start over Nunes. This yeah, is right now. Yeah, people yeah. need to have that little bit of confidence and a little bit yeah. of just give yeah. them time. Because towards the end of last season, my fancy league, I'm one of them people that makes one and then never does it. But I made one. Gakpo mm. was in my team. Nunes was nowhere near it. Because the end mm. of last season, Gakpo was a key part of the way we were playing and. 
It's but, Rose reverse now of them too. That's, that's what I mean, but it happens. Happen. Confidence, you know, Gakpo playing striker, left wing, right wing, centre mid's not helping. And I just yeah. think the same with Petjetic. He he needs to be... He has to stay in midfield or stay in centre-back and actually get regular games there because if you start moving him around, now when you're trying to get him up to speed with the, the quality of football we're playing, because what you've got to remember this season was so much better than last season. I yeah. just think he might get a little bit lost in it like he was in that Europa League game. Um, just before we do go on to a little bit more before um, the Nunes and Diaz situation, and please make sure you do like and subscribe to the channel. If you are new, get get that subscribe button hit. And if you are watching right now live, get, get your comments in. Like, uh, hit the like button. If you are watching recorded, please hit the like button anyway. Um, just a little bit on a couple of more transfers at the moment. That's just a, a tiny little bit because I don't really see much into these. And that's Diaz Reese. Diaz to PSG is a no go. It's been shut down by for a bit of a okay. Okay. Uh, PSG, you... and I've no desire to, to really talk to Liverpool. I don't think they have other plans apparently to, for Mano. No desire to sell to Liverpool. So I happy to see uh, Diaz stay, certainly for Me, the near future. I don't, I don't mind him staying, but. What about the links? I'm sure isn't there links with Barcelona or didn't his dad come out? Um, how long ago was that when he said something to do with Barcelona? That was last year, wasn't it? Last I think I think that's the one. That's the one to be more concerned about. Not really PhD, mm. more the Barcelona. If that comes around again, like mm. me, I rate Diaz as a player. I think he's a great player, but the, the frustrating thing about him is the end product, the decision making in the in the final third. If, if he can improve that, then he could maybe be. Something that we were looking at when we had like um, uh, Manny, for me that kind of thing. But that, but yeah, that's why I really I that. I it's really that. frustrating the amount of chances he misses and stuff. He's great, great talent, great, great footballer. Mm. But the amount of chances and sometimes decision making in the final third is is very frustrating to watch at times. He's become predictable this season as Diaz. Uh, you know, if, if he played like he did against Man City week in week out, yeah, without yeah. even without the goals. I'd be more than happy because he absolutely ran ran Kyle Walker riot. Yeah. Riot, but yeah. he doesn't do that enough. And then every time he gets to the bat, every time he gets to the left side of the box, the edge of the box, he does the same thing over and over. So defenders are reading what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. And it, it never goes on the outside to cross it in. It's very rare. And when he does it, he calls havoc. But he normally cuts inside or shoots or passes it away. So do you know what I think that's down to the fact? Sorry, like. Do you not think that this season, especially that I, I don't know about you, but I think the, the quality of right backs compared to left backs in the league is massive. I think right backs got so many better players compared to left back. And it, this is not just isolated to Diaz. Again, I, I think he's doing okay. I think he could be better, but he's had other stuff going on as well. But yeah. like, there's loads of players this season, like down the left side, that have struggled. Martin Ellie's rough one. Like, a lot of Arsenal fans have been talking about him saying he's not been good enough this season. I think he's only scored like four goals, something in the league. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you look on City's left side, their main left winger this season has been Doku. And I think he's got like one one goal contribution or two goal contributions since like I'm October. Sorry. So you're looking at three of the best left wingers in the league. Now, mm. is that down to quality of them? Maybe. Or is that down to the quality of right backs just being much better and the defensive mm. systems of maybe the teams that are defending against these, you know, the three best teams in the league? It's a good better. question, but I think no matter yeah. what talent you are, no matter what the right backs are coming up against, I don't think the right backs are unbelievable, by the way. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's a few, obviously, you've got Reece James on his fake Trent, yeah. now Bradley's up there. Uh, I think the Gallagher, friends of the leader is some good right backs, though. Yeah, but I don't think, you know, going back over the years, it's about the talent of the, of the winger. I've seen yeah. better right backs get absolutely schooled. I remember, remember Bale against Inter Milan in, in the Champions League. Against my he ruined Michael's <laughs> career. <laughs> no. You know, what I'm saying? so it's about the it's about the talent of the left back. You know, depending on what mm. right back you're against, I don't think that the level of you know of what we've seen like Cafu or stuff like that right now. We've got Trent, Reese, and but we're not against Trent. We're not against Bradley, are we? We're not against it. Yeah, yeah. They're on our team, and Reese James has been injured half a year. But I don't think the other right backs are that level. To how much like... um, how much goals did Diaz get for us last year? And just just in the prem, it won't be many because he was injured, wasn't he? Yeah, it's like seventy percent of the season. Mm. I, I, still, I, I, I think these last couple of months he's starting to come back into form. Yeah, yeah. Got to, you've got to take into consideration. Of course, of course, the family season. And, and the family thing. That's what I mean. I just, as well, I think because we're because we're doing like 
know what the ironic thing is? If we were, if he was playing this way last season, we'd probably think he was doing better because we were so poor. I think this season, because we're flying, it's just like the small margins. Like against United the other day, you've got like a five against two attack. You've got like a five, like a five against three attack. There's so many scenarios that I watched on uh, Ben Foster's uh, Ben Foster's. Um, uh, what I can't remember what it's called, but they basically have a, yeah, they have a goalkeeper coach on there, and he just said like that type of scenario you'll you know you'll do hundred times in training. And the attack and five players against the two or three will score ninety nine percent of the goals or ninety percent of the goals. And unfortunately yeah. for the pool, it just wasn't their day. But we've seen that against you know Man United early on in the season when it was nil nil against Arsenal um, at Anfield. There was times where we should have you know done more. But I think Diaz and Gakpo more than the others are getting more stick. I kind of get it. They've scored less goals, less contributions. But I just think that our expectations of them right now is so high because I, I personally think we're ahead of where we should be. Yeah, that we've just revamped yeah, the whole midfield, yeah. and I put yeah. this in the WhatsApp chat the other day. Liverpool's <clears> back line. Let, let, early on in the season, the pool starting back line was Trent, Matthew, Van Dijk, and Robertson. Robertson that was their yeah. best back four. That was fit and it was doing really well. Matthew was fantastic before he got injured. Them, them four play. I mean, just um, Matthew, Robertson, and um, Allison. Sorry, I had Allison in, and Trent. I've missed over hundred games this season between them. Yeah, Van Dijk's the only one still there. That's what I mean. So yeah, add that into right. consideration yeah, yeah. of like, yeah. I just think this season we shouldn't be doing as good as what we are. And I know as fans we want the best, but I think Diaz has been under a lot of a lot of scrutiny at times because rightly so. Like against City, it was such a strange performance. He was like a nine out of ten, mm-hmm. but he could have scored three, two or three goals for us and what is the game? Mm-hmm. And I just think mm-hmm. because, we're used, well. <laughs> because we're used to Mane, yeah. who Mane I think at times wasn't didn't look as good, skillful. Like you, you know, you might see. Diaz do like a Rabona cross or something. Mane would just was so direct, fast, and would take a pass. Yeah, and I just think because mm-hmm. of the levels that they, him and Salah have set, it was just like to a ridiculous level. Like we just, I don't think what, it, I, I, it would surprise me yeah, if we yeah. see a drop off where you don't see Winger score in 20, 30 goals again for a good couple yeah. of years. And I just think that, that them players are getting spoiled. a lot of scrutiny. Sorry, we've been spoiled. That, exactly. that, that, yeah, that's what that's what it's down to. We've been spoiled with, as you say, Man, Mane and Salah. Yeah, yes. now we've got Diaz and Salah and Gakpo and all that. I mean, Gakpo and Diaz, their goal contributions this season, okay, they're not as high as they could be, but they're still pretty decent yeah. for yes. any Premier League side at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Including the teams at the top as well. Yeah. That's I mean, what I mean. Like, it's just a bit mad. He's, it? Ahead of, he's ahead of most of them, like, sort of in the top six, at least. He's just uh, criticism and the missing chances and stuff. Every, like, yeah. there's nothing wrong with criticism. I, like, I think it's absolutely fine, but I just think, me personally, if we let's say we do go and sell Luis Diaz, who are we gonna go and buy? That's gonna be best at him. Like realistically, if if they're gonna be better, it's very likely that we're gonna to have to go and spend a lot more money. I know there's good players out there. Like obviously, if we I got rid of his Salah, name. there's a guy there that plays for AC Milan. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah that's the only. Yeah. He's gonna cost over a hundred million now. He's gonna cost yeah. a lot of money, mm-hmm. and you've got no guarantee. Like if you look mm-hmm. at his stats, his stats are fantastic in terms of goals and assists. If he comes mm-hmm. to the Prem, is he gonna be the Italian league? So much different and so much slower. Like. It's just, it's so. It's, I, 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 lo- I love Diaz, but mm. I love Diaz more the player that we had the first six months. So yeah, I'm, no, that's, I'm that's, that's the same else. here. Oh, because he was so months. explosive. Yeah. As, as um, WD Red said in the chat, mm. we, we keep seeing the same things from him where like he's he's getting running to a certain position, getting the ball and saying, having to play it back. That could just be his instructions. If there's not an on for him, it might be a case of go backwards and start again. That's what that's just the way like top yeah. level football is now. But if it's not, if you, if you haven't got something on for you, mm. go back and start again and re, you know redo the transition. And mm. I just think that sometimes that could be what might be stopping them. But I we need to lot, see that city performance more often. A lot of people have in fan bases is they put these players on pedestals before they even get to the pedestals. Yeah. And when and, and when they don't perform, then the drop off is absolutely massive. Like everyone, absolutely. I said this about Arsenal. Like people, you know, Arsenal fans put Arteta on this pedestal, and when it's not. You know when it don't go his way, then the 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 throw back back at him is even bigger. And then look at it now because he went on a good account. bit of form for two months. They're saying he's the best thing since sliced bread again. Yeah. <laughs> even though around Christmas he got beat back to back against Fulham and West Ham. That's what, yeah. that's what I'm saying. So that blows my mind. Exactly. Exactly. It's the same happens in our fan base. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, scores a goal. Ah, oh, what's all this stick for? What's all this stick for? I don't deserve the stick because he scored one goal. It's like no. Think about what happened the week before, the week before, the week before, the week before that. You know. Oh, and and it's it, it just it, it, why why is it, can you not just what give your opinion of a, a base of time 
yeah. instead of one game. You know, it's a, it's a reactionary it's opinion. It's nice as well to be able to see a 7 out of a 10 regularly mm-hmm. doing an 8 yeah. out of 10 every four weeks. Do you know what I mean? I've this got one, one suggestion. Oh, Sorry. One suggestion which I think could actually help Diaz as well, but also help one of our players. Okay. It's a shame he got injured this season. That's Ben Doak. Yeah. We train him as an inside winger instead of having him as a normal winger and cover Diaz. If Diaz goes, you could have him out on that side. If Salah stays as well, that is the mm. that is the question. I think Ben Doak is possibly our future either left or right hand side yeah. winger. He, he's got a ben lot. Ben Doak's a proper old school winger, isn't he? Last thing, last yeah. thing to add on Diaz before we go as well. You know, sorry. Do you think that fact that Liverpool changed the system and Robertson isn't bombing down or what happens affected Diaz? I think a little bit. No I one's actually yeah. mentioned that. I've just yeah. popped it in the head. I think a little bit. If you think back to when we changed the system just like about around a year ago, yeah. that was when Diaz come back into the team out of his injury. And then yeah. since then, we played the inverted system where Robinson yeah, or Gomez yeah. are not meant to get forward as much. So Diaz is basically on his, his only option, on really, on mainly, has been like the left centre mid, whereas he'd have yeah. the left centre mid and the left back to give mm. him three options in like a triangle or maybe overlap with him to play it through or what have you. Whereas now, that's why I think we, we're seeing a lot of where he's going down the left, cutting back, and have to play mm. it back into the midfield. You know what I mean? That could be, mm. could be a reason why. Because mm. Robinson, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, Robinson, Robinson, the engine, you can see the engine's not what it was. It's, no. <laughs> Are you surprised? That's, 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 again, that's the, the future for the next manager as well to sort this out because, yeah. again, what formation we're going to play, we don't know. So, is Diaz going to suit that formation when we have him? I yeah. just want some competition for Diaz. That's all. Oh, don't get me wrong, Gapo and Nunes play there sometimes, but n- naturally we need someone else that can give him. So when when he's not playing well, it's like you you realize that oh you, you get a kick up the backside, you're gonna get put on the bench. This is why silence are important. I mean, people say oh, oh, all people want is silence, but it's so important. Look, well, what look happened at Manny when Diaz came in. That's what I mean. Yeah, look what happened to Manny. I know he moved middle, but fucking hell, mate, he ended that season fantastic because yeah. Diaz. He has looked like a, a Jorasol rabbit, you know what I mean? Like, he's looked fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What an impact he had. Wow. Yeah. And he got the better out of Manny because Manny went exactly. to forward and he was a different player. Yeah. A completely yeah. different player. Um, before we do go on to... Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about Coop, Coop Miners at Atalanta. There's a little bit of talk about Coop Miners at Atalanta. About. I don't think it's too much to talk about anyway, boys. So, it's you know, I think I might brush that one to the side. Because, you know, we don't, again, we don't know who we're going to get as manager. So, there's certain, certain subjects that I don't need talking about. Um, Diaz and, uh, uh, Thomas Lyon Nunes, sorry. So, uh, Kieran says here, Diaz has paid peanuts. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of players at our, our club that I've paid quite, you know, very, very undercut. Hey, well, I'd love to be paid peanuts. Not much at all. Gapo needs to play a left wing mark and it's his role. It's, a, it's, it's funny because I think Nunes is better left wing as well. So you've got yeah. Diaz left wing, Nunes left wing, and Gapo left wing. So it's like, what has happened now with our, with our recruitment? <laughs> it's <laughs> a bit mad that we've got so many people that can play left wing. Um, Nunes and Sobersly are, are reportedly upset at the board and FSG and the handling of young Klopp's li- uh, leaving um, news. What is going on, Nathan? Because I still think there is more to the story with the young Klopp situation. And, and, I said it. The truth will come out at some point. The truth will yeah. come out at some point. I think yeah. whether it be in an interview, young club makes when he's after the Liverpool manager, whether it's been on a podcast, whatever he wants, he wants to do, he's welcome to go on this podcast because you know I'm not afraid to ask him <laughs> questions. Unlike some journalists out there that are afraid to ask him certain questions. No, you got to ask him the questions that need to be answered. Yeah. That's no, exactly that. You know, I some agree. fans want to know the answers, but journalists have motives. To not of course, answer of course, because of course. they might get kicked out of Liverpool and not come back. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. the fact that Jurgen Klopp decided, the reports are that Jurgen Klopp decided to, to come away when he was in a meeting at FSG. Reese, do you think there is more to this situation? Uh, do you mean just as in the Klopp leaving, or do you mean in terms of uh, well, Klopp Nunes, leaving? Uh, and do you think there's do you think there's anything to go by the Nunes and the side thing? I can understand them being unhappy because, uh, or more, more uh, Sabozilai, because I think, uh, don't get me wrong, I think he's a fan of Liverpool, but I think a large part of him coming was cause to play on the clock. So mm, I'm assuming yeah. he didn't expect him to be leaving with like a season later kind of thing. I don't even think that was the plan. I think Klopp was probably going to stay on, but I think this is just my theory. I think that he 
they maybe told him whatever the budget was going to be or whatever he kind of had to do for next time. And he probably thought he's kind of had enough of kind of having to work within, like, sell this player or sell that player or you can only get this amount where he probably sees it as, I've won the Premier League, I've challenged for the Premier League multiple times, he was unlucky to not win it on two of the occasions, uh, won the Champions League, been to the final three times. He probably, he probably sees it as that he shouldn't have to to budget. He should kind of be able to ask for what he wants and get it. And he's kind of... He's kind of always like just got on with it and dealt with it, and after a while, it's kind of draining, I suppose, because you're managing, you you're managing him, Liverpool. Exactly. So you see, it's draining him in like in like press yeah. conferences. It does it does slay a slight dig, so people don't notice it, but it says slightly. If you read between the lines, it says he uh, always mentions about money. He always mentions about yeah, of course, I'm not yeah, he does it. Money. He does it in a certain way, yeah. Like say, oh, we we can't we can't do what certain teams can do. Whereas when you think about it, this is Liverpool. We shouldn't have to be having those conversations. That like, what do you mean we can't do? Buy or un, uh, buy certain players that's out of our range, but obviously that's not clock. It's not really so much clock, and that's just how FSG operates. So I just think, and especially last year, in terms of how bad we were, you could see how much it kind of took our clock as well, because you could see him getting rattled when he was getting asked about certain things. Um, I think that's like the that. main thing why he wants to leave. I, think, I don't think it's just the worry. I think it's the the, the press. I think the way the, the press would speak to him and. You can just see he doesn't enjoy having a conversation in, in like the um the press conferences anymore. And like the referee like, committee. And the referee committee. I think, yeah, yeah, I go back to that. I think there's a lot he's, of things. He's the only one he's it. the only one that stands up against yeah. them directly. And then look, when he stands up against them, they're kinda of costing us points. They've cost us, I don't even know, at least six plus points uh, this season with the Man yeah. City game with that, that penalty in the last minute McAllister, the um Odegaard handball the Tottenham game, whereas for me, we would have won that game because we, we would have we would have been in front because we would have scored first from the Diaz goal. It's like, I mean, so I, I think he's fed up with quite a few things. Obviously, FSG a little bit, even though he's not going to say that because, you know, our clock not is yet, he's anyway, quite, he's, he's, quite, the money, he's the not going to say it right now. He's, he's, he's quite graceful, quite classful. He's the money not. will definitely be a thing, but I think yeah. it'll be a case of football in general. So, like, he'll probably be looking at it. He might, he might actually be, like, we don't know. He could be fine with the budgets that SFC is setting him, but he also knows that it's not enough to, yeah. to challenge the like compete, City especially and Alvin Castle and like, yeah, and things yeah. like that. He so likes being the underdog, doesn't he? He does like being yeah. the underdog, but I think there's times where he's thinking, come on. Yeah. Like, I've got three centre backs out injured here. I've got no centre back. Can you at least, you know, give me a little yeah. bit of money to go get a centre back? Instead, he went and got. No, he's got the last and the last one. He's got the last <laughs> we was on cast. We was we were top of league before that. You know, we was on cast of, of being a t- league challenger, a league challenger. Yeah. And yeah. all he had to do, is, all they had to do, is just back him a little bit in that January and say, you know, I can see, I can see you need, you know, we waited for Kanate, but couldn't you not bring that forward or get someone else, a, another mm. one that's mm. decent enough as well as Kanate and the same after. You know, I was, mm. it was nice to wait for Kanate and get Kanate, but. Should have got someone else as well. Got someone else then, as yeah. well, yeah. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like, well, yeah. we're waiting for Kanate, but we'll just throw a season away. Yeah. Yeah. I said it all the time. I say it all the time. Fergie didn't have to throw a season away. When he was trying to start, he never had to throw a season away halfway through. We've had to do it twice with the young club. Mm. I'll, I'll two think... seasons away, whole seasons. I'll and this think... is why we have the, we, this is why we have Danny Mills going on Talk Spot and saying, <laughs> oh, he's it, it, overrated because it's not won a trophy here. It's not won a trophy here. It's not Klopp's fault, and and Klopp yeah. will get a lot of blame. You know, <laughs> he makes mistakes. He makes mis- plenty of mistakes. You don't want to. You, you don't want to know my opinions on Danny Mills. Average, average Klopp. footballer at best. Average footballer at best. He's not right about yeah, Klopp. Yeah. But he's right about bringing the situation up. But no, he's, yeah, I, I get taking all context out of it. The problem is no talk sports are there to fuel the fire, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. They just love the clicks. That's what it is. Just like, stirring we'll, the pot, stirring the pot. Danny Mills yeah. won, like, I think, a Carlin Cup in his whole career. He played for Man City when Man City was the Man City we all know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he's, he can't, like, oh, yeah, don't even get me started. For me, on. he's got more relevance now for talk sport than he did as a footballer. Yeah. So that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that should kind of say all, more the last couple of days all, really, compared to what he did when he was playing. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think that's right. That, that's right. What you're saying, like so with talk sport and the press, and all that. I think that's one of the things that's just ground Klopp down a little bit. The way it's I see it over countries, either. Yeah, and for Klopp, I, the way I look at it, like he looks tired in his interviews. Yeah, he does. And I think there is just a small element where he's actually fallen out of love with the game. 
a little bit, mm, especially yeah. with a lot of the refereeing decisions over the last yeah. couple of seasons. Yeah. Like Reese said, going up constantly against the PGMOL of complaining like, sort of, well, you got this decision wrong, you cost us, and then admitting it, saying, oh, yeah, we got it wrong, but... But there's no consequence. Not, not it's, just, it's just, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. it's just you like, can, oh, sorry. You can tell, that's, you can tell that's, that's grinded on it because, just yeah. by the way, he answers the questions regarding the incidents. Like, yeah. he sits exactly. there and he's just like... Like why you even like like what it shouldn't even be a discussion. Do you think that was handball? Do you think that was you think that should have been a red card? He's like It shouldn't even be a discussion. Why are you asking me? You're asking me so so you can get me to say something aggressive and then get a get an article out of it and then clickbait it and then you know what frustrates me most? You know what frustrates me most is the journalists don't do their job. Yeah. Right. And and it's the same with the FSG situation. Like the reason why Cop gets frustrated in, in things, they're asking him questions that he can't answer. Yeah. Instead of instead of asking Klopp why is there no budget for this or why are you not going to act like that, go to the can people that are in charge of the budget. Yeah, ask them, them these questions. You're in a these direct, uncomfortable questions. Yeah, yeah. Do what your job is doing. Mm. Go to PJ Mall and ask them what is going on. Did you how see the thing the other day with Michael Owen and Howard Webb about oh. the? Uh, it's embarrassing. The, the, the it's I, I was I was literally sitting there thinking, do you know what? Like I know I'm a Bill fan, I'm going to be biased towards this decision, but like I was just, it was absolutely terrible. I was sitting there thinking, you could have put a, you could have, what's that? What's that ball's name off that show with Tom Hanks? Castaway, oh, um, is it? Castaway. Yeah, you literally could have put that ball off that in front of Howard Webb and got better questions than what Michael Owen was asking. Like I was like, oh, I'm, I was fifty fifty. I was, I wasn't. Right. Like, would it, just say you to. See- is that oh, a penalty or not? Because even Howard Webb wouldn't like fully commit to saying if it was a penalty or not. It was like, well, Owen, Owen, Owen doesn't know. Owen doesn't know where his bread's buttered. That's why it's like oh, you, you would not. You would not think he's like. I mean, play for Liverpool and stuff. Because when I was listening to that, I was just like, you're just kind of agreeing with Howard Webb. You're not really. You're kind of sitting on the fence. Like you don't really he's know. Like, yes, and, and you've played the game, so you should kind of have a better object. Like yeah, I mean, objective. But yeah, yeah, I love this my as well. I'm probably one of the only ones that do, but he's just oh, he's brain dead. This is why <laughs> fan channels are taking over mainstream yeah. media because yeah. mainstream media they talk look at, a look lot. At, of uh, crap. Look at the United stand. United, like as much as we don't like United, Mark Oldbridge has took that 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 channel and like he did an interview a couple of weeks ago with Hoyland, and there's been like loads of backlash from it because players from United have supposedly leaked that they weren't happy that he done the interview. And he said, like, that's that's a load of bollocks. Like, he was absolutely fine doing it. Yeah. Hoyland knew about the channel before anything. And he was talking about, like, basically the reach that he can give United in terms of, like, interviewing players or doing articles about them and stuff is more than what the likes of Sky Sports and I can do. Because his, yeah. his channel is dedicated to what United is, do you know what I mean? That fan base. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think for, a, like, a couple of year periods, there was, like, the kickoff, which is True Geordie. That was doing really well. And now we kind of see, like, a little bit of a damage trajectory from couple of them channels, but, like, you've literally hit the nail on the head. Like, you've seen, like, um, Sky Sports transitioning now into YouTube with the overlap, um, Soccer Saturday, um, Soccer Social, or whatever it's called, Saturday Social, sorry, with um, Sky Sports, where they do, like, Premier League stuff, where... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's heavy, it's, like, them shows that they do are heavily clickbait, based on, like, stupid things, like, when Liverpool were playing Arsenal, or when they were playing City, I can't remember what it was, who, who gets in a combined 11 of Man City, Arsenal, and Liverpool... Stuff yeah. like that, but that's the content that unfortunately a lot of people want to see. Yeah, but that's the content that's the free top teams right now. Yeah. They're starting to transition into it now because content is king, and unfortunately, like I, I, I don't disagree with any. Like I'm not. This is not my what I think, but the, like women's football has been on like the men's football and stuff like that. Um, you know, ex ex players that have just Mike Lowen is an example interviewing Howard Webb. The, the live content that we're getting now in between like half time and at the start and end of matches is, is dying. It's terrible. And I, I, I believe it. If, you, if you're good at your job, you should get the job no matter whether mm-hmm. you're, you're black, yeah, white, yeah. Yeah, whatever, yeah, race, yeah, exactly. or whether yeah, you're man yeah. or woman. But unfortunately, yeah. I feel like Sky Sports now, especially, has just become a, it has become box ticking. And that's why yeah. on social media, as we're all sitting here now, you know, there's four people here, we're all from completely different places, we're having a good chat about football. And mm-hmm. it doesn't matter whether. We replaced Damon with a woman, and she knows about football. It will still have a good chat. Exactly. But you, exactly. if you're taking boxes and just giving people jobs for the sake of it, it doesn't work. That's why yeah. content is better when you just get the best people in there, no and matter where why, they're from or who they are. That's why their viewing figures in BBC, Sky Sports, TNT are sloping downwards. Exactly. Because all all our channels, our style of channels and content, yeah. are the ones that are taking over because yeah, that's what people want to see. More natural, yeah. It's the same yeah. as now. Like as an example, let's imagine. Um, 
I, I can't. I, I don't. I don't watch many many female shows, but let's let's say Love Island. I would say that the viewership on that is mainly probably towards women. I, yeah. It's just again, that's a guess. I'm not trying to sexualize it, but in that side of things, but, but that's the demographic of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, but if like, let's say for example, a clip gets uploaded to YouTube of that. Most people in the comments will probably be female, based male, and as as we've seen, you know, you know, God rest her, Caroline Flack used to present it. Mm. The, the, that was probably because, in their opinion, the, the female presenter would link more to the, the viewership. Do you know what I mean? And mm. but then you've also got what's his name who does the uh, the, the commentary on it, Ian Stillen. Yes, like, he's a male yeah. comment on something that might be more heavily linked, like heavily connected towards women. And I just think you've got to have the right people for the right job. It doesn't matter course, what you, yeah, you are or what you are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's why, as as you just said there, that's why the viewership of like Sky Sports, BT, and stuff like that is gone I'm, down. I'm still a big fan of having the old school players on. I, I miss them yeah. days where you had Matt Letizia, Charlie, yeah, Nicholas, Phil Thompson, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, all that. I met Matt Letizia a few months ago, and he's a top. Yeah. He, honestly, he's a quality it's bloke. Like, what's, what's, um, Laura Who's Woods, Laura Woods is fantastic. Is mm-hmm. Laura Woods has yeah. been in and around sport since she was yeah. younger. She, yeah. I, like when she's when she's if she gets something wrong, she gets something wrong. Same way as male, you know, yeah. male football ex footballers do or male, yeah. but you know, it's absolutely fine. She got the right people in the right place. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I a lot of a lot of female presenters, a lot of female you know, t- uh, pundits get a lot of stick because of because they are female and they say like like you yeah. can't you can't. Um, you can't talk about it because it's the men's and that's game. That's the wrong way. That's what Joey Biden it. says you can't talk about it's the men's game. But has yeah. he ever heard like Jimmy and Jenna's talk? Has he ever heard Danny Mills talk? Exactly. Has he ever heard Michael Owen talk? Yeah. He seems yeah. to to direct his his, his problem at women, and he's not doing yeah. it. It's just it's just the people that's in the position. I don't get that. I don't get his, his his opinion on that though, because like let's say let's um yeah um let's just uh, that Aluko any Aluko he's gone for it a lot. Now I think she is a terrible pundit. But let's just yeah, imagine yeah. she's just brand new into it now, but she's yeah. just finished a twenty career, a twenty year career as a footballer. Mm. Now, why is she not qualified enough to do that job compared to, let's say, some like I, I, Laura Woods has never, never, as far as I know, has never played a sport. So why, no, why she... would like what's what? I don't get his point of like you have to be like an ex footballer to be able to do it because there's mm. so many good pundits out there that have not played football at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it is it is like. Thing of going against women, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. just it's yeah. crazy. You just can't imagine a woman talking about the game that he played, and yeah. that's that's his that's his personal issue. If he's got yeah. uh, female problems, then that's him. He's got um, he's got a number of personal issues, Joey Boy. He's got too many, too many. That's to that's him, and he needs to sign himself out. That's yeah. <laughs> there's people that can help you there, Joey, for that. But um, <laughs> yeah, just. Yeah. Uh, if you've got nothing nice to say about people, then don't say it. But exactly, you know, but... the Annie Luca situation, I don't think any of Luca's helps herself with, with things she says. Yeah. So I don't think she's good putting it, but no, I think just... she's just been a scapegoat for it. But him. he was Michael Owen, no, and we'd all want him off the Exactly, that's what, I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Like, and Michael, Michael Owen, I, I've said this about. before, like, he's my hero, even though he's gone to United. He was the footballer I watched growing up as a kid who I loved. Mm. I, I, it's, it's still hard for me to like see him as like the United player because I, I idolized him. No, but he's, he, like you said before, really it'd be better off talking to a football than talking to him because he, he just. <laughs> I seen him. Did you have you seen a meme of him when he's talking about throwing the apple in the bin in his living room and his mum shouting at him? No, no, <laughs> oh my god! That. He basically he was talking about his competitiveness in an interview about competitive was when he was a kid, and he's talking about ha- having half eaten apple and you know having like the bollocks basically to throw it in this bin with the chance that it might hit the wall and he'll get shouted at by his mum because he was that competitive. Like it's just like you need to listen to it. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there thinking, what are you talking about? <laughs> Before we do go, guys, let's let's go over um, the new the new uh, scout that we're going to get in. Matt Birchall from Bournemouth, okay. another one from Bournemouth. Richard Hughes already in in from Bournemouth, being sporting director, chief scout, a scout that did want Van Dyke before he came to Liverpool, before he came to Southampton. I think it was from well, Southampton. Yeah, yeah. I think they wanted Allison. Uh, as well. There's a few yeah, players that he did like as well. Um it's it's definitely someone that I'm not opposed to. Obviously, we don't really get to, we don't really talk about scouts anyway. You know, it's only recent know, years so where this has become a thing where it's it's breaking news sort of thing. You know, back yeah. in when I was a kid, you wouldn't hear anything about owners or, or scouts or sporting directors. You wouldn't hear anything. You just see the footballers coming through the door, you see the footballers play on the pitch, you see footballers leave home. You know what I'm saying? 
you wouldn't see anything around the backroom staff. You maybe might hear a little bit about ownership. So they'll so you me either, isn't it? Anything linked with football now is popular, and unfortunately, it's just like we said this last time, like that that X paid subscription thing now, where people can get money just on clicking on posts and stuff and articles linked to it. Mm. It's just it's what's driving this. Like I genuinely never heard of the fella before today. Richard Hughes has heard a little bit. Like when was it massive news to know about like a, a sand like a new? A, a it's new not. It's not. It's you like, know what I mean? no. You know, it's, it's, yeah, something, it it's, yeah. it's something you skip past when you're on Football Manager. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind it. Like I'll read it now. Like LFC transfer room. You know, we will likely reshare that on, onto the website and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's that's the way it is now. That's what you have to do yeah. to be able to to run as a as a business that is linked around sport. Yeah. I'm not against it. It's just yeah. mad that we've gone from. In my opinion, I used to check teletext and the BBC red button. You go on Twitter and literally refresh. Wait 15 minutes, refresh again, and you'll have yeah, 10 or 15 minutes. You, you, you get all your news, Twitter, exactly, right, Instagram. Links from like, yeah, scouts, so much apps, players like, dining, just... and you don't know which is true, which isn't true, because there's just so many the different internet. news it's outlets. The internet era now, that's yeah. why I call it. The at the, end, at the really end of the day, it, as long as... Richard Hughes and was it Mark Virtual was guy yeah, uh, yeah. And, and and Edwards as well. And Edwards complained, complained, yeah. As long as they get the right players in, I really couldn't care. Yeah. Uh, by all accounts, they've got a, a big black book of players that they've monitored through their cr- own careers, being yeah. in the positions that they've been in. If they sign the right players at the right price for us and everything works out, don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, quite, like, I'm quite right. to read the articles and stuff now. <laughs> Like, if anything comes up about something to do at Liverpool, you know, I, maybe years ago I didn't find it relevant, like I said, like signing a chief scout. I'll have a look about it now just because I like, I think football's not what it used to be 20 years ago. Like, yeah. we wasn't, 20 years ago, we didn't really used to talk about, like, yeah, we didn't know the ramifications like of how yeah. much, like, yeah. uh, Abramovich is spending at Chelsea, whereas now you will yeah. see thousands of posts every day about City's charges, yeah. you know what I mean? Which is just, like, <laughs> irrelevant, really, to a football fan. We've got yeah. no control over it, but. It's just the you way wouldn't even hear about the corruption, like like the actual corruption that happened yeah. in like, Italy and places like that. You wouldn't yeah, hear like about players. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, stuff. yeah, certain. No, you wouldn't hear about none of that. On the overlap yeah. a couple of weeks ago, they were speaking about it. Um, Gary Neville and Keane about playing against like the Italian teams in the nineties, and yeah, he was saying yeah. like they, they play a ninety minute game, like they go off absolutely knackered, cramped up, and everything. And like the Italian players looked like they could go and do another two hundred and seventy minutes or something. Inhalers, like, mate. Never... It's inhalers. It's That's inhalers. It... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andy, Andy, just on cue there with it, uh, breaking news. If Mark, a little bit of news. Liverpool to find a manager next season. Um, Stay in the obvious. Stay in the obvious. One week's wait. Breaking news there from Andy. Um, <laughs> I've already put my name in, so it's all right. Sorted, lad. <laughs> Andy, if you want to be a writer for the transfer room, just give us a DM on Twitter, and we will we'll get back to you. Um, boys, new. A new look Liverpool, it looks, it seems to be, um, especially the backroom staff, Matt Birchall, Richard Hughes, Ed McLeodwards. I'm going to say it now, FSG are doing a brilliant job with this. The whole, waiting, you know, the whole waiting for the final piece at the end of the season the whole... when we find out about them. David's finally received a little pay package That's off SFG, yeah. so stop slandering them. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 oh, as, the... as we've said, I've said myself, like I, I've got me doubts about them, but if you do something right, Get give pissed. them the floor. It's like that. Yeah, yeah. I've, I said that all the time. Um, the thing is, with, with me, the FSG situation, like I've, I'll expose them for what they are. You know, I've spoken, listen, I've, I do more than what some other journalists do. Now, when I was writing Talented Transfer, I've sort of cut off a little bit of writing now. But I've gone and speak to Red, Red Sox people. I, I, I've, I've interviewed June, June Lee, who was an ESPN reporter for Boston, and I've spoken to him about FSG, and they'll say exactly the same over there. I've reached out to these people like like some journalists don't do this. Is reaching out to other people that that are related with FSG or you know their clubs are owned by FSG. It's about getting the truth, and and that's all I care about about this yeah. club. Is you know do they really care about the club as a whole? Yeah. I don't they're think they do. I think they, I think their money their motivation is just money based only. Yeah, they're more about. They've always been more about the money. Like I rate them in terms of how they run us in terms of business wise. Don't get me wrong, as a business and where they, uh, Liverpool's net worth and certain things and stuff like and whatnot now, and then they got and then stadium and stuff. But I would have liked them to kind of put their hand in their own pocket a bit more when it comes to transfers. If they fund the infrastructure, Liverpool aren't be paying mm-hmm. loans every year for yeah, 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 that yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, like they can only. I think they can 
yeah. they can give a hundred. I, I think it's like seventy million over the course of like three years. It seems okay. like in line with PSR, they allowed, they can put the money in their own pocket and give us that towards like mm. players and stuff. But it seems like the infrastructure they could have funded like the expansions to the stadium, they could have funded the training ground stuff like that. Yeah, but like people, every time you speak to someone about like the like, SFG in, I'm not SFG, you know, I was just wanting to do better over little things. So. If they if Liverpool didn't have to repay 60, 70, 80 million pounds um loan fees every year, there's money freed up for Liverpool to go and spend on something else. And yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean it has to go on players. It could be on yeah. Yeah. paying for the, the, the academy or paying for something else. It doesn't have to getting be that. Better, getting better tickets. That's what I mean. Ultimately, because we've loaned the money, which every business does that, it's just the way you pay for things. Mm-hmm. Um for the infrastructure. That means that Liverpool every season are having to repay that loan, do you know what I mean? Or every month or whatever the, the terms are. And that also means that Liverpool course, Football yeah. Club's income is less because of the outgoings that they've got. Yeah, do you know exactly. what I mean? Or the income that's available to spend against us. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying there, Nathan, like the problem with FSG in us, and I'm gonna I, I don't know if you were gonna say something after that. I, I think you was, but then you went as well. But the problem with FSG in us is the fact they don't listen. That's the problem. They think all oh, people that don't like FSG is like, oh, we want £600 million players. We want this. Yeah, yeah, they think yeah. that we want. They think Look that we what want. City have done. We don't want that. No, we no just want. That. Yeah. We, we just want to compete like, every season. When we won, a, so when we won the Champions League, we signed Adrian Van Bern, and... Elliot and Van Adrian. We we spent like twelve million uh, Van, pounds. Isn't it Van der Van der What's his name? Van der Berg. Van, Van der Berg. Yeah. Van der Berg. Yeah. We signed him for like two million. We signed Elliot. I mean, I think it was Elliot, and I think we signed and, and Adrian. Adrian. Yeah. And, and then we signed Tiago. Tiago was on the field we had in five years. We're not asking you to go and spend, you know, two hundred million. We don't expect that. But just no. going back to Danny Mills earlier, like what we were saying, if Liverpool would have just spent a little bit more when we needed to, we never would have had the season have, last season. We would have more titles yep. now. We'd have more... We'd and have we would have more titles. Yeah, exactly. More it's, it's ridiculous to say more. that we've done what we've done when we're like, I think in the Klopp tenure, he's like, we're like seventh but the highest net spend in the league. Mm. Like, which is mad because it wasn't the case if he come in and it was full like, the, the club was filled with talent. We had some good players, but like, we didn't, you know, we had to, Klopp, in my opinion, again, it's why I've got like, not doubts, but a little tiny part of my brain is saying, <laughs> just be cautious. <laughs> With um, <laughs> Michael Edwards stuff because before Michael before Klopp come in, Edwards and stuff were there. It wasn't going great. Um, the players, some of the players were getting like as much as I think Brendan Rodgers was a bit egoistic and it was right for him to go. He didn't want to sign Firmino, which obviously in hindsight was a bad thing to look at. But he didn't he didn't think he needed Firmino at that time. He wanted someone else, and they forced yeah. that transfer on him at the time. Yeah, and then yeah. he was basically getting paid like left wing and stuff like that when he he just wasn't that player. Luckily for us, it and lucky for him, he got back to Klopp coming. Yeah, Klopp, Klopp, Klopp saw the vision, he kind of saw what kind of player yeah. he was, and yeah, the rest is history. And I think Edwards, Edwards is going to be the end of the football production. It might not even just be Liverpool. They're looking it's at another FG, club, aren't they? Yeah. So they're looking yeah. at another club, another football club, and that's that's another problem I have. Like they've got so many hands in different pockets. Liverpool could have been forgotten about at some point. You know, this I'm, is what you know. I'm not against, really I'm not care. against that. I'm not, I'm not against it, to be fair. No, I'm, I'm not, not against that whole multi-club thing, because it, it works yeah. for a lot of things. You look at Red Bull doing it with Leipzig and New York and all that, and Salzburg, and then you got Brighton doing it with themselves and uh, USG in Belgium. Even Man City as well. As long as it's done properly. As long as it's done properly. All the academies, yeah, like, yeah, all the academies yeah. that That's Man cool. City have. But all around the world and stuff. So I guess I'm I'm not gonna bash FSG completely. Yes, they have made mistakes, and you're yeah, right in what you say in they just need to listen a little bit more, more to the fans, yeah, and yeah. it has cost us. In the, I'm, I'm convinced of it. Most it fans are convinced of it. It has cost it? us. Yeah, it's cost us titles at the end of the day with that, yeah. that lack of investment. But hopefully, Michael Edwards and that will see it right for this season coming. Uh, once we're back in the Champions League, because there's no doubt about it, we are going to have to spend money. It has. Yeah. It's got to be done, and I'm curious to see how much. They are prepared to spend. Once that cost it, cost it, I don't know. Three on the side. I wouldn't mind them. Do we need to sell Salah together? I, I don't think we have to sell Salah, but you got to think mm. of it. For me, if 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 it's not this season, it will be next season. Because just how F- Edwards and FSG work in terms of how they like to move players, how they like to move players on. Even though I think I think keep, Salah's, Salah getting a new him. deal and Van Dijk and plays like that, I think that could happen. But I think it'll be like a year. It won't be a big, big. Uh, well, two years, might, two years might visit it every year, but 
I think I, I, it's hard to say because I think the pillars of club will look at it and think we've lost so many players that are free, like Naby Keita went for free. Um, Shame, oh, and then, went for yeah, exactly. Yeah. Them two alone cost combined about eighty million or something like that, which yeah. is a ridiculous amount of money for the pills to lose. But yeah. then you've also got to look at this Saudi money now. If they're serious, the pill have probably always got that little thing of well, if we just if we you know get the player to flirt a little bit with the agent towards that side, we might actually get money if we need to. But <laughs> Sal, Sal is different than like the likes of Henderson when they've been given contracts, and even Van Dyke. Van Dyke for me right now. He hasn't got the speed as what he has is like 2019, 2020, but I think he's actually playing better football. Like in terms, of like I think he's got yeah. it's less. He's, less right now. he's having, yeah, he's having to do less. I mean, he's having he's to adapted, do more. He's adapted though, and, but he's also got like he's adapted. kind of like he's still got it a little bit. But in previous seasons, he's had that like the order of like, well, I don't need to do that, or I don't need I don't to do need this. To get, yeah, yeah, I don't I need to but get, now I think yeah, he's like, well, do you know what? I do have to do that. So I think he, Van Dyke is. He's just a Rolls Royce. He's a yeah, Rolls Royce. Thiago Silva, I think he's 40 or 40 this year. And now yeah. he's probably at the season now where you think, yeah, it's time for him to go. And I know Chelsea mm. are different to those, but he won a Champions League with him when he was like 36, 37, and he was yeah. one of the best centre backs in the world. Van Dyke's yeah. only just turned 32 or 33. There's no reason no, why yeah. he's Liverpool, especially with like the legs that we have. The only, the only problem I've got is obviously the high line, but there's no reason why he can't stay for another two, three years at the highest level. No, I think I agree, so anyway. I agree. Even Salah, I'll keep him for another couple of seasons. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think we need to rush to sell him because I think that Saudi, that Saudi option will always be there for him because he's, yeah. he's a massive name. So even if it's he's, he's like, in, in next, terms of sport yeah. or football, like mm-hmm. he's a um, Saudi poster boy. He is, that's he, what I'm saying. He's, 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 he's the biggest, that, that he's the biggest icon that could possibly get in terms of like, um, like the religion of that, like that part of the world, and maybe yeah. obviously his beliefs and stuff. So I can understand why maybe like people keep saying, oh, he wouldn't want to do that, but. If, you know, I I don't know. Like I I I don't I don't um I'm not religious at all. But maybe he would have that connection where he might think, you know what, I've won everything now. Let's say we do win the league this season. He might think I'm going to go there now, which is absolutely fine. He owes us nothing. He's been amazing, you know what I mean? And I just think the amount of money that they might offer him and the, the the approach of going to live in maybe that part of the world. Who wants to live in England? Mate, the weather's terrible. It's horrible, you know what I mean? Even in general, just England cost. Yes. Obviously, for them, cost of living is not really signed, but just in, in general, Saudi, the way, he was, the way he would, be, I don't know if he's living in Saudi because I think they all live in yeah. uh, Kuwait, don't they? Most of the players or then or whatever, whatever connected. But mm. in that part of the world, mate, he'd be idolized more than any other sports person in the world, in my opinion, even more I'm than Ronaldo. Me. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he deserves it as well. He deserves it more than anyone. And fair play to him. Like, I think he's come to when he's come to Liverpool. Everyone's obviously got the different opinions, but he's, he, the way like um, he's he's approached like this part of the world as well. I think he's just perfect for anywhere he goes. He's such a nice human, do you know what I mean? And I think that he might want to go and like maybe see off his career eventually in that part of the world. If I were you, go, I want to give you an, an image in your head and uh, something that you might think about when before you go to sleep. Imagine how uh, John Henry would feel if Saudi came in with three hundred million pounds for Mohamed Salah. I hope you sleep yes, as well as. Yeah. I hope you they're sleep. They're not. They're not even thinking about it. I don't even think three hundred million, David. Yeah. I think a hundred million if they offer that again. No, but genuinely, I, I hope you guys sleep as happy as John Henry would be in that situation. You're a sick man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sick man. <laughs> and that'll be all tonight, guys. Um, thank you for joining in. Thank you for everyone that's been in the comments. Make sure you do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Oh, ten thousand subscribers now. We are next to aim is to 20,000 subscribers. Again, if we can get to the place where we want to be with this channel, we'll make even better and more content for you. Um, it's all back into the fans. Everything we do is go back into the fans. Everything we do goes back into you guys at home. Um, obviously, Jen, Jen has paid for a lot of this at the moment. Jen, we are keeping your money to the side and hopefully we can get some uh, better equipment yeah. for the future, for future podcasts. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Reese, Nathan, and Stu tonight as well. Um, okay, you. have a great weekend, guys, and sleep well knowing that Fiji Billions coming in. <laughs> John. <laughs>